Hey guys, Akil Stokes here, Forex trader, trading coach, one of the co-founders of tier1trading.com, and of course, the host of the Trading Coach Podcast. In today's episode, I wanna share with you a conversation we had in one of my live trading room sessions where we were speaking to a trader about the importance of developing rules, and even more important than that, developing the foundational knowledge that it takes to become a consistently profitable trader. Now, do me a favor, if you enjoy the podcast, make sure you hit that like button, share it on social media, and also leave me a review on whatever podcast app or service you are listening on. And lastly, if you're interested in taking your trading to the next level, involving yourself with the best community of traders in the world, check out the risk-free 14-day trial that we offer at www.tier1trading.com. Sign up, get involved, see what we have to offer, and start getting your trading on track. So if you have a bat, all right. So what what is the the question? And don't worry about the bat English. I'm I'm. It's my first language, and I'm horrible at it. So the question is, if you're involved in this bearish bat, um. Oh, you're saying that that's where profits would be at the three D two. Could target be a D leg. Three D two retest. Um, let me ask you this before I answer that. What targets do you use for, for trading advanced patterns, the, the bat pattern specifically? Which which one? Which Fibonacci? Fibonacci zone. Usually the 382 from 80. Okay, now that's that the big red flag came up. Why usually? How do I know when it is and when it isn't? The 3D2 from A to D. All day. Sometimes 618. Okay, well, how do I know when it's the 3D2 and when it's the 618? If you're if you're a teacher and I'm a student and I'm and I'm you're trying to I'm trying to determine when I should use the 3D2, it depends on the set. Okay. The, enlighten me. Depends on what? What would have to happen for me to take it targeted at 3D2 versus what would have to happen for me to take it at the 618? How do I know when to do which? Price action question mark? So you're you're not even sure, are you? Do you know when to do which? Price action isn't an answer. That's a cop out answer. This is a this is an, I gave I gave this answer to a question this morning. I got a question on the Twitter, uh, on the Facebook that said, Akil, what is the all time best strategy in your opinion? Or something like that. Let me actually see if I can find it. I just said price action. I didn't feel it was worth the energy of doing the whole thing about there's no best strategy. The best strategy is the one that fits your personality and philosophy. Too many words, right? So I just said price action. Um, at least I can find this question. I, I, Akil, I hope you're well. Tell me which, yeah, not which is. Tell me which trading strategy have you found to be the best ever? Price action. So yeah, so here's the thing, right? So, and I understand you just joined, right? If you just joined, you shouldn't even be worried about pattern formations right now. You should be working your way through the Cornerstone course. If you're familiar with the basics of trading, you should be working your way through the Foundation course and slowly working your way up, right? There's no way you should be on advanced pattern trading right now. So slow your roll, right? Slow down a little bit. Take your time. You don't want to rush through. Trust me. You can ask any of the traders here. When you rush through, what eventually happens? A, you start trading and you lose money. Or B, you just end up going back through it anyway. Um, so you might as well just take your time the first time. But here's the thing, right? So price action isn't an answer because that doesn't tell me. So, 
So here, if, if you can't tell me when to take which target area, how do you know when to take which target area? If you don't know when to take which target area, how can you properly set up a risk reward? If you can't properly set up your risk reward, how do you know if it's a trade you should be taking or not? You see how it all, how it all works backwards? So the first thing you got to do, right? We, we need to know three things before we ever enter a trade. What are those three things, guys? And ladies, three things we need to know before we take a trade. Entries, stops, targets, right? Set it. SET, stops, entries, targets, right? So what you need to do, the next thing that you need to do, and you'll, you'll, you'll develop this as you go through the course. Again, I'm, I'm understanding, I'm not yelling at you or anything like that. I'm understanding that you're, you're just, you know, you're a trader. You just got all these cool new tools uh, for you to work with, all this information. You want to rush through it in first. You want to get after it. I was the same way. But there need to be clear, concise rules on when to do what in your trading. Does that make sense? You need to know when should I take targets out of 3D2 versus when should I take them at the 618. And it could be as simple as I always take target ones at 3D2. I always take target twos at 618. It could be something maybe trend related where, watch how I, watch how I word this. If price action is in a bullish trend and we have a bullish pattern, then I extend my targets, right? To first targets being at 618, second targets being at a 127 exam, uh, extension, for example. If price action is in a bearish trend, and I have a bullish pattern, then I take the, the normal targets. Does that make sense? You can have rules that adjust them, but at the end of the day, you need to know when to do what. Because if you're in a position where you just don't know where you're taking targets at, you're like, well, sometimes I take them here, but other times I take them there. Well, how do you know? Well, it depends what price tells me. Well, how do you know what price tells me? Uh, um green right you just you know feel like me you just say the weirdest thing that comes to your head when you get caught in like a, a a question you can't answer that was like me in high school where you know you get quizzes on books and i never actually read the books i'd use this thing called spark notes where you read the summary so it's like just enough for you to tell the teacher what she wants to hear You're like oh yeah romeo and juliet you know they were in love and you know they, they both killed they, they killed their, themselves whatever like that well, what happened when they were looking out the window? Uh, blue. What'd you say, Akil? Blue. Blue? Blue? <laughs> You're just caught in a lie. You're like, ah, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, you gotta, you gotta have rules. You gotta have rules for when you do stuff. So rules-based trading. There's not a problem with, with taking different targets for different types of patterns or different types of situations. But... You need to know when to do which, because if you don't, you're just going to make a, an emotional decision, right? You're going to see price action getting close to it. You're going to be like, well, this time I'm going to be conservative, but next time I'm going to be aggressive. And there's going to be no consistency to your trading, right? No consistency to your trading. So halfway there, but take your time, take your time, take your time through the courses. All right. Any questions? Um, Chris, I started in February, still didn't arrive at patterns. Yeah. I was talking to David the other day. I, sh I shared this through uh, during the event. I was talking to David the other day. I wonder if I can find where, where I put these at. And I got these really, these two really awesome messages from him where he was someone that he knows himself and he's like, I always kind of rush through stuff. And I've been talking to him a lot with about just like slowing down and taking your time and learning the basics first. I know it sucks because you can't trade it, but trust me, everything else is built upon that. That's why we call it the foundation. No one sees it, but it's what keeps your house uh, standing sturdy. And he was like, with you and Jason's help, I've made changes this year and have maintained that change. I have approached the process completely different um, than what I would have in the past. Um, thank you. Then he went on to say that I'm getting super excited and pumped. I'm going through the strategy development courses now. He said, up until now, I thought I was going to need to practice more of the foundation. But as I'm thinking of ideas for strategies, the concepts of the foundation, 
and I moved my screen in a way so I can't see it. The concepts of the foundation course are popping up in my head and I totally know what they are and what to look for. I'm realizing that the info is clicking. I'm still going to continue to practice the foundation, but now I know it's, it's coming together nicely. And what I loved about that, uh, no, not David Giles, um, Dave Shepard, was again, this was a trader who was like, he's like, he knows himself. He's really gun ho and he's like, go for it, go for it, go for it. And we've been working with him a lot on just like slowing down. And even some of you guys, I don't know who it was. We were, I think it might've been George a long time ago. We were on the chat just like, you know, he had joined like a week ago and he's already talking about CTS stuff. And we're like, yeah, slow down, man, slow down. Um, and he's slowing down. He, he took his time. He started working on the foundation course. Now he's on the, the strategy development part. And now the stuff that he learned before is making sense. He's like, oh, this is why I had to learn how to read price action. So it's 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 a normal process. But once you slow down and take your time, it, it, it it's really the best way. And I, I, again, we'll take a break after this. But even in my trading career, again, I, I, I always tell the story. I went through my courses the wrong way. Even when I was smart enough to reach out for help. I still just wanted the solution. I wanted, I'm like, what is the, what is the easiest strategy that I can pick up and play right away, right? A, B, C, D patterns, right? You're telling me, you're telling me I just have to hit the copy and paste button? Oh, buddy, I'm gonna make this money, right? And I, I was hitting the copy and paste button all over the charts, right? Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. <laughs> that was bleeding money like, like nobody's business. <laughs> How come this stuff isn't working? I'm copy and pasting it. It's not working, right? Because I thought it was the simplest strategy. I then went on to the next simplest strategy, which is Fibonacci uh, failure trick. Like, so you're telling me all I have to do is wait for price action to retrace to the 3D2 and sell? Oh, oh, oh. Fibonacci 3D2 sell. Fibonacci 3D2 buy. Fibonacci 3D2 sell. Right? Bleeding money profusely all over the place. All over, all over the place. Stains around the house. Just bleeding money everywhere I go. And finally, I kind of, I kind of went back to the basics. I kind of went, I kind of went back to the basics, and I was like, "All right, this is, this is dumb, Akio." Um, because again, I got to the point where I realized I was trading a trend continuation strategy, but I couldn't identify a trend. It was the weirdest moment where I was on some trading forum, and some guy asked me, or Twitter, or someplace, and he was like, "What's the?" It might have been my blog actually, because I wasn't really on forums. But the guy asked me, "Hey, what do you think about the trend of the euro dollar?" And I was like, "Uh," and that was a. I realized, like, man, I'm a trend continuation trader. But I don't even know which way we're trending, and there's a problem there. Um, but then I reset. And I just start focusing on like reading price and stuff like that. And it was amazing how like after I read price, everything I was doing before, whether it, blue, yeah, blue. Um, after I read price, everything I was doing before, as far as ABCD patterns, as far as Fibonacci failures and stuff like that, I didn't have to really change what I was doing too much, right? Those concepts worked. But I just wasn't using them right. Now I learned how to use those concepts within kind of the, the laws of price action. And, you know, it kicked myself for not doing it early. But, yeah, that stuff, that stuff makes a difference. Yeah. Stupid kill, Stupid kill. If you would just make a filter that said you'd only trade trend continuation opportunities when the market is trending, you would have made this much money. It was stupid stuff. But you got to go through that process to learn and, and be humbled and stuff like that. And then be able to pass on information to newer traders like you. So. There was a point. Everything happens for a reason. But anyway, um, let's take our break. 13 minutes. We'll come back. We'll finish analyzing the markets. Uh, not a lot out there, so I'm glad we're able to have these, these conversations. Uh, but let's grab some coffee or whatever you need. Um, I won't judge you, you traders. And I'll see you guys in a little bit.